Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all doing well. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. So today I thought I would talk to you about 10 of my favorite common house plants. These are some plants that I really enjoy having in my collection that I think are a little bit underrated, deserve a little bit more love. Okay, let's just get right into it. Okay, so the first plant that popped into my mind when I was thinking of underrated common house plants was the ficus elastica um particularly the green one i think is this burgundy is that the same thing as like the plain green one um honestly i'm not sure but this is like your standard ficus elastica the lighting is kind of weird i'm sorry guys maybe i should turn the kitchen light on too that can make it better is that better or worse i think that's better Okay, yes, so this is your standard ficus elastica or rubber plant. These are very widely available, very common, um, usually quite affordable and very easy care as well. However, I will say that the first almost year that I had this plant, it literally didn't grow because it's often marketed as a low light plant or low light tolerant or whatever. When in reality, this plant loves light. Honestly, it loves direct sun, direct light. Um, a lot of light and a lot of water will make this plant grow. So as soon as I started providing it with that, it really took off. And um, yeah, this is what it looks like it now. Look, looks, <laughs> this is what it looks like now. Um, I cannot wait until this is like a big tree. It's probably like, I don't know, a couple feet tall at this point. And um, I actually had this under my Mars Hydro and it started giving me these really nice, beautiful, big leaves. So what I love about this plant is first of all, how deep the color is. Oh my gosh, my street is so noisy. I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> Um, but first of all, I love how deep the color is. It's such a deep dark green. If you really like dark foliage, this is an awesome plant to get. I just think it's so stunning. I also have a Ficus Elastica Tineki, like the variegated one, which is beautiful as well. I love that plant. I pretty much love all of the Ficus Elastica, but for some reason, I just am really drawn to the just plain dark green one, and I think it deserves a little bit more love, so... Yeah, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I like the, the color of the leaves, but I also like how beautiful and shiny they get. I actually have not shined, cleaned these leaves in a while, so it's not looking like, well, you can see it still has a bit of shine, but I often just um, spray this with my neem oil solution because it is prone to spider mites. In my experience, Ficus elastica um, are prone to spider mites, this one and the Tineki. So I like to prophylactically spray with neem oil anyways, but it makes the leaves really shiny. So yeah. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be a long video if I talk about all of the plants for this long. But I just really, really love this one. And despite it being a common plant, it, it is just one of my favorite house plants in general. So yeah, that is the first one on my list. Okay, next we have a, a delicate one here, guys. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Ugh. Okay. Next, we have my friend here, my burrow's tail. Um, in my, was it my houseplant tour? Y'all informed me that bro means donkey in Spanish. And I did not know that um, burrow's tail and donkey tail are the same plant, but I swear there's like a different variety of this that has more round leaves, like less elongated. So I don't know if y'all know what kind that is. Um, let me know down below, but this is the one that I have and I love this plant so much. I'm obsessed, honestly. I remember I saw at the beginning of 2020, I saw people on TikTok, I think, that had like long hanging baskets of this and I was just so drawn to it. I was like, yes, I need that. Um, so I just love like the trailing succulent. Like, oh my gosh, it's so cute. I love this plant so much. Um, <laughs> you may know that it is very, very delicate and sensitive. Um, if you even touch the leaves sometimes, they can knock right off. I was debating even removing this from its spot <laughs> to show it in this video, um, but I did and I haven't lost any leaves yet, so say a prayer, but yeah, it's just so cute. Very easy care. Once the leaves are um, soft, then you water, just like most succulents. Um, it's been like a relatively quick grower for me. Like, I don't think it was really trailing. Like, it was probably trailing half as much when I first got it, maybe. 
and now it's like trailing down past the pot so i just love it so much i actually have some babies propagating of this i would buy another one of these in a hot minute um i would love to have them hanging from the ceiling and trailing down really long i can't wait until i own a house and i can just have plants hanging from everywhere um because obviously when you're renting <laughs> you don't really want to like go putting giant holes in the ceiling everywhere but yes this um this is definitely one of my favorite uh common plants these are in no particular order really by the way i'm literally i have them set up on a table beside me and i'm just grabbing them so um the next on my list is my beautiful calathea medallion now this is a really easy to find calathea where i live i do see these popping up everywhere and i just think that they are so beautiful i'm getting more into well not really more into because i haven't bought anymore but i've just been really appreciating calathea more lately um yes they can be tricky to take care of yes they are prone to spider mites yes they are prone to crisping if the humidity isn't high you can see i do have some leaf damage on this leaf right here so i've talked about it before so i'm not going to like go on about it but this plant had spider mites very 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 badly last year i lost almost every single leaf and i have been growing it back and this is where we are at today so i think that she is looking absolutely stunning um, I'm so happy that I saved this plant. It makes it even more like special to me that I kind of saved it from the brink of death, honestly. So now I prophylactically treat her with the neem oil. You know, we don't wanna, we don't wanna be, be going through that again. Um, but I just love like the beautiful large leaves. The pattern on them is just so pretty. And then they do have like a beautiful purple back as well. So yeah, I just love her so much. I would actually love to hear which calathea you guys like because I would really like to try out some more calathea, maybe get a couple more varieties for the spring. Um, but for now, yes, I have just been enjoying my calathea medallion. Okay, next on my list is skindapsis. And yes, skindapsis does get a lot of love. Um, I would not say that they're underrated they do receive their well-due um, respect. However, there is one that gets less love than the rest and it is Skindapsis pictus argirius. So this is actually just a strange um, looking kind of cutting that I have for mine. I do have it for a reason because I wanna show you something. But yes, you may have seen my large Skindapsis pictus argirius that trails off of one of my kitchen cabinets. I think you can actually <laughs> see it behind me there. I will insert some footage of that one. It's absolutely beautiful. It's super long. It trails all the way down from the top of my cupboard down to where my kitchen sink is. And it's just a super easy plant. I've had it for a couple of years now and um, yeah, I just love it. It does put out very small leaves, which is was like something that I wasn't crazy about But that's why I wanted to show you guys this cutting that I have in my hand So this is a cutting that I took off of my main plant and I usually grow like my little cuttings under my Mars hydro grow lights So that's where I put it and I could not believe the leaves it has been giving me since I put it under that grow light So this was the leaves that it was giving me before I put it under the grow light and then this, this is a leaf. This is a leaf that had given me after I had put it under the Mars Hydro Grow light. So look at the difference. Like, that's crazy. So I think that this plant has a lot of potential if you give it a lot of light. Here's another one of its newest leaves. So beautiful, and it's actually giving me some really silver ones at the top here. Like, look at that. Look at how silver that is. It's so pretty. So I think a large reason why mine is giving me just really small and um, dark leaves is because I have never really given it a highlight situation. So this plant has so much potential when you give it a lot of light. And like regardless, even in low light, yes, it gives you the small leaves, but it's still really pretty. Like the one I have, just like the beautiful trailing effect. I love it so much. Um, I think it's underrated, you know, like the Exotica gets a lot of press, but the Skindapsis pictus argirius just doesn't get as much love. So I had to shout it out here because I have just really been appreciating it lately, especially seeing these leaves that it has been, been giving me under the Mars Hydro Grow Light. So, yes. 
Okay, next I have one that we all know, which is Monstera adinsoniae. Now, this plant does get a lot of love, so I wouldn't call it underrated. However, it is one of my favorite common house plants that I think everybody should own. However, recently I have been getting comments from people that they really don't like this plant. Um, which is surprising to me. It's just such a cool plant in my opinion. And it's so versatile. You can have it trailing, you can have it climbing. I, um, most of you guys probably know I have a large one that is on a moss pole. I will insert some footage of that one as well. This is just a cutting that I have been growing off of that one. I actually like just recently potted this up and it's giving me a new leaf right there. If you can see that. Monstera adinsoniae is kind of a funny plant to take care of because I wouldn't call it easy, but I also wouldn't call it hard. From my experience, it's just kind of specific with its watering. Like it likes to dry out, but not for too long. Like as soon as it's dried out, I try to water it. I don't want it to go like a day or two being bone dry because it's going to yellow leaves and um, it's just not happy. So I just try to like really, really be on top of it with the watering, try to be consistent with it. And um, it grows really well for me when, <laughs> when I'm doing that. But yeah, I just think it's such a cool plant. And I love when it gives, these are smaller leaves on this cutting, but I do have some quite large leaves on my mother plant and they have like almost like, they're not, <clears throat> pardon me, they're not velvety or anything, but they do have a really pretty sheen in the sunshine. I haven't seen sunshine in days now, not sure, you know, um, it's a faint memory at this point, but one day the sun will come out again and I will be able to enjoy seeing that beautiful sheen on its leaves. But yeah, I'm not gonna go on about this one for too long. We have all seen Monstera adinsoniae, but I, I love it, so that's that. Okay, next I'm going to talk about one of my favorite Hoya. Um, so this is my Hoya Compacta. Where's its little taggy? There we go. Um, so many of you guys have asked me where I got these tags from and I've literally completely I cannot find the Etsy store at all and I've forgotten what it's called I've searched on Etsy I've I mentioned this in one of my other videos if anyone remembers the name of the shop I'm not even sure if it's still in existence because I could not find it all but anyways I get a lot of questions about these tags and I'm I literally have no idea I totally forget the name of the shop um but I love them so I'd love to find it again <laughs> if it's still in existence anyways um, my Hoya Carnosa Compacta, which if you watched my recent plant chores video, you would have seen that I recently repotted this little vine into there. Um, it seems to be doing well so far. This is one of my favorite Hoya. I think, um, I just, you know, I really love trailing plants. I'm sure that you guys are, know that or are catching on to that from the plants that I tend to gravitate towards. But this is just such a cool plant. Like I know it's not for everybody. I I understand that, but it is for me. Like I am obsessed. It's so freaking cool. These when they're really long are just oh my goodness. I cannot wait until that day that I have a really long one. I think these are so beautiful. I know a lot of people get nervous um, and stay away from these because they're scared of pests getting in these little curly leaves. I have never had a pest on this plant. Like knock knock on wood because that would suck. So I understand the fear, but. Um, yeah, I've never had any issues with these at all. They have been nothing but super easy for me to take care of. They don't need to be watered very often. I just kind of let it chill, do its thing. Once it gets wrinkly, give it a good water. And yeah, I just love it so much. I guess it's kind of like a similar vibe to the burrow's tail, like a trailing succulenty type plant. But I just had to mention it because this is one of the first plants that I got as well, um, like a couple of years ago when I first started collecting plants and um, it's just been so chill and easy and even though it's been one of the first plants I got and it's a common house plant, it is still one of my favorites. So yeah, love her. Next, we are going to be talking about my Maranta Lemon Lime. Now these are very common house plants where I live, um, but I believe that I've heard that these are hard to find in the UK, I think, if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, I could be wrong, but these are just, oh my goodness, I love them so much. This is actually a cutting I'm growing from my mother plant and this plant actually looks nicer than my mother plant because I have it this under my Mars Hydro Grow Lights and it puts out these beautiful, huge leaves. 
and I don't think you'll be able to see on camera but these leaves actually do get like a sheen to them as well they have like a beautiful shine they are just so stunning oh my goodness it's putting out a new one here so cute I'm just obsessed with Maranta you guys you know that I uh, love my variegated Maranta but the lemon lime is another one that I really love. I actually want the red veined one. I know a lot of people say like I can only find the red veined one. And yes, it's a it's a very different look from this like green and green, <laughs> green and green, this green and green one. Um, but I actually want to get a red vein one and try it out because I've never had one before. I've only had um, the lemon lime version. Anyways, I'm going on a tangent. I don't have much special to say about this plant. It likes high humidity. Um, the leaves do crisp on me sometimes, especially like on my mother plant. It's not doing very well, but um, I was going to sell this, but I honestly like I might keep this one because it's so pretty and it's just doing so well. So yeah, I might keep it. And they do okay in low light, but if you give them bright light, you guys, then you get these big, beautiful leaves. So just so you know, I have it under my Mars Hydro, but on like the second shelf. So it's not getting like burnt to a crisp, but yeah, I just, so beautiful, so beautiful. Okay, next we have another succulent, you guys. It is my Euphorbia Trigona. This is just a little one. Well, it's growing now. I mean, it's still very little, but it's growing. Um, if you followed me for a while, then you might remember that I had a huge one. It's at Shane's house because I couldn't really move it when I moved. Um, but this is just the little baby one that I have at my house now. And it's so cute. I'm obsessed with these Euphorbia, you guys. They are super underrated in my opinion. These are super common where I live. You can find them at Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever. And you can find big ones for like 20 to $30. And I just think that they are so unique and so cool. So yeah, this is, I bought this as three little cuttings. I don't know why this one is like, he's just a late bloomer, I guess. Just, you know, that's fine. The other two really grew, but that one kind of stayed the same. And when I bought them, they all looked like this guy and didn't have any leaves. But now these two have been putting out leaves and they're just so cute. Um, I will say that when I'm not on top of watering this, even in the winter, it will lose its leaves. So it did have leaves up here and it unfortunately dropped them because I was a little bit too slow to water it. So yeah, as soon as it kind of gets soft at all, I give it a good watering and it seems to be doing really well. I'm actually excited that I have this baby one because I can watch it grow and it's going to be really fun. But, but yeah, it's just what a little cutie. I love these so much. I mean, I see people have these, but I don't see people talk about them a lot. And I just think that they give such a cool vibe, especially as home decor, like a huge one of these in a room is just like, ugh, it's just such a look. It's so cool. Okay, next you guys, we're going to go over this one quickly as well, because I feel like I have been talking about this plant a lot on my channel. Maybe I haven't, but um, this is my Thanksgiving cactus. At least I believe it's a Thanksgiving um, but I guess this is just going to be kind of holiday cactus in general because in my opinion, they're super underrated. These are very common, especially <laughs> around the holidays. You can find these literally anywhere in grocery stores. There is just like so many of them available. So I think they kind of get overlooked because of that. There's just so many, so many around. But these are such cool plants, you guys. They have some of the most beautiful blooms I've ever seen in my life. They're so stunning. They are so resilient. I have had this plant. This is one of the plants I've had the longest after Greta. Um, I've had this for, my goodness, four years maybe? And... I had this before I was into houseplants and it's still with us today. So that tells you that it's easy to take care of because I had no idea what I was doing and it has always been doing well. And it has bloomed for me every year, I believe. This year, I thought it wasn't gonna bloom. I had it under a grow light and then some of you guys told me to move it away from the grow light because it needs darker light and cooler temperatures to trigger the blooms. So I moved it away from the grow light and near my front door and then it bloomed right away. So yeah, um, hot tip, if yours ever doesn't bloom, um, they need less light and cooler temperatures. These are plants that kind of like last forever. You see, you know, people pass these down in their families for like decades. And I just think that they're so beautiful and so cool and so easy and add some lush greenery just while being super, super low maintenance. So I just think that they're underrated and especially because of the bloom. They are just, the flowers are so beautiful. Okay, last but definitely not least, some of you guys may have seen me just post this on my Instagram. 
but it is my beautiful Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen. Oh my goodness. So these are a common variety of Hoya, but I just think that it is one of the most beautiful Hoya out of all the Hoya. Um, I love this plant so much. I can't believe how big she is. She is just like trailing like crazy. I actually bought her when she was a pretty full basket already, but she's just exploded. She grows so fast. She loves a lot of light. Um, I do not water her very often, only when her leaves are soft and bendy, which tends to only be about once a month right now because it's the winter time and she's in a plastic pot. But I just love this variegation on the outside of the leaf like that. There is also the Crimson Princess, which has the white variegation on the inside opposed to the outside. I know somebody once told me the queen wears the crown, so the crown is like on the outside and that helped me remember it. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful to you guys as well but i actually bought this as a hoya tricolor so if you guys see it labeled as that as well it's the same thing it does tend to get pink when it gets a lot of light so i think that that's where like the tri color comes from because it tends to be green white and pink right now it's winter it's not under a grow light or anything it's just near my it's near a self-facing window however it is cloudy and gloomy almost every single day so it's not getting a lot of sun or anything so it's not very pink right now but in the summertime it tends to get quite pink I think that these are underrated. In fact, I feel like all of the Hoya Carnosa varieties are underrated. Like if you can get your hands on a big, even just a Hoya Carnosa green, I tend to see them on Facebook Marketplace a lot. Um, you can find like a pretty full, usually it's, you know, an older person who has had theirs for years. I actually bought a full trailing Hoya Carnosa green on Facebook Marketplace and it was a really good find. So definitely check that out. I. I tend to see them on there. Okay guys, that is going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, oh, Cadence. Hi, sweetheart. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. If you're interested, if you're interested in bonus content, I do have a Patreon. It will all be linked down below. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, let me know what your favorite common houseplants are or houseplants that you think are underrated are because I would love to hear your thoughts and chat with you. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.